paper magic will survive like the heat death of the universe and will... <laughs> oh, it's a smuggler's copter. Would you like to crew this? And then it crashes because they don't understand arithmetic. All your cards belong to me. Two minutes into mason them in the eyeballs, I switched to pepper spray. He's like, yeah, it's downright refreshing. And went back to the mace. Magic is dying. I'm done. <laughs> Selling everything. I might be a hoarder. And yes. I don't have the crayons or glue to explain this to you right now. <laughs> Were you going to die twice? Oil Just... would be worthless before magic cards would. Well, okay, Dr. Man. That's Mr. <laughs> Dr. Professor Jason. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Brainstorm Brewery. We are here this week to talk about the banning and unbanning news I know you care about. I know Jason cares about this one in particular. Jason, I made Ponder has been unrestricted. I made money on Ardent Plea, so yeah, I do care about this one. <laughs> oh, I thought you were talking about uh, Ponder being unrestricted in Vintage. Oh, yeah, uh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Do it to Gitaxium probe next. Really fuck up vintage. Let's go. Four v- Gitaxium probes. Can we, can we pour one out and have a moment of silence uh-huh. for the vintage player who now has to get four of the several thousand dollar ponders? Think think of the people here, Corbin. Think of the If you're no, not that's using real. the Chicago that's ponder real. with the turtle and the Chicago deep dish pizza and Chicago style hot dog, if you're not using the hot dog turtle, you're fucking up already, so... Yeah, it's the best uh, ponder there is. Uh, the Merfolk Ooh. ponder is just superior to everything. It's just nice. It's just great. Corbin, I are, are you referring to Lorwyn ponder? Perhaps it's got fish uh, on it. The, I think the only the biblically mm-hmm. accurate name of that card, according to some rando at a GP in 2017, is fish tit ponder. So I'm gonna have to. Oh, oh yeah, neat. fish tit ponder. You have to refer to that by its biblically accurate name. Yeah, great. Got it. It's God-given Christian. I guess we're off to a running start here on Brainstorm Brewery this week with uh, with with that one. With that description of a car. Locked, fish with locked kids. the title. I, m- I missed last week. I was at Gamma. I was at the, the Louisville Convention for Store Owners and Retailers and all that jazz. Uh, I got to come back with a fire and inform <laughs> everyone that uh, it... The the official god given name of that card is Fish Tit Ponder. I see. Not well, to be, well not welcome to be back. Confused DJ. with Moon Ponder or Dan mm-hmm. Scott Ponder. Fish uh, Tit Ponder sounds like a Ted Nugent song. <laughs> hmm. This is what you do. I I like things, and this is what you do to them. So thanks. I I haven't cared about you like especially fish tits? after you tell it's me okay that. To admit you like fish tits, man. <laughs> Corbin likes the other half of the merfolk, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, when you picture a mermaid, do you want the bottom half to be human or the top half? I I don't I don't think I've not ever thought about that question, Jason. He didn't even think about it. He just goes in on instinct. He doesn't Fish even half think a about, cloaca. Oh, which, Does that which half change do I your use? answer? He just instinctually I'm not going to look up what that is. I've learned. It was this month. You don't know what a Zero cloaca more is? Googles you haven't for learned you. anything if you have to look that up. Zero more Googles for you this month, Jason. Your limit resets next month. And I got, I'll I got you. you <laughs> the future untaxed assets. Was that the one that got you? Yes. And in fact, I, I ran that one back at Magic and got everybody. So very nicely done. One person continued to talk about assets, not getting the joke. Thinking of so you're about. a fish sex predator and a joke thief, Corbin? One really? person. Oh, I credited Jason at the end. Don't worry. I'm not a thief. tiny jokes joke thief. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I, um, one person continued to talk about untaxed assets and how that was a thing you had to look out for, even after I explained that it was in fact not a thing and just uh, some words we said. Well, yeah, you uh, scared somebody to buy more gold that night. Congrats. Yeah. <laughs> Plus you got a, an autistic person on the weird thing they happen to know a lot about. <laughs> you have to go look this up, uh, this episode up a few weeks ago, but yeah, Jason, um, with his future untaxed taxable assets. I think he made that one up uh, as he went. Uh, but welcome in. We're going to talk about Violent Outburst getting banned, what it's done to modern. Uh, it's crushed my living index, I'll tell you that. Uh, that said, everyone is is talking about moving to Ardent Plea in these shells, and we'll talk more about that. There's also the Fallout from Fallout. That set's come out. Jason is all about it. Oh, uh, that's old. That's Corbin, old. Well, Corbin, shut the... F- you're like the fallout from fallout. And then you said, Jason's all about it. Jason's fallout about it. Fallout, fall about it. All out yeah. about it. Something. I'll give you that one. That's good. DJ. Why? Because that was good. Are we I great on that. a curve here. Yes. <laughs> the curve of a fish tit. Let's be real. 
Okay, welcome into Brainstorm Brewery, My everybody. With mermaid that, would be one where the bottom half is fish and the top half is also fish. That's a sexy mermaid. And then it's on a plate, and you're eating. I want to fuck it a dinner? sturgeon, you guys. Okay. Why does it have to be split top bottom? Why can't it be front back? Why only a sturgeon? Why not like a child, like a normal doctor, like a PETA family doctor? It's got to be a fancy sturgeon. Yes. They make, they make more money. More money. Idiot. Yeah. Like gold a sturgeon. <laughs> well, Dig for that gold, like your friend yeah. who talked about crypto at Magic Night. <laughs> well, that now that person doesn't come to Magic Night because they've retired a billionaire. Okay, DJ, you're just missing it. Uh, the but you two, way to be a listen. billionaire is to start with a billion dollars and get into Magic. True. The second fastest way is to get really good at breaking bulk. Breaking bulk time. Breaking bulk time. Break, break, break. Oh, yeah, breaking bulk. There's so much good stuff. It's a pick. Breaking bulk. The end. I, I softballed that one to you. Jeez. Yeah, that was great. I loved it. It was perfect. Speaking of soft, I got one with 10 printings that is still being bought on uh, Card Kingdom for like 75 cents for a lot of the ver- versions. There's only one under a quarter. Tribal Flames. What is this 10 printing black common that has always been a common? Can we and talk about that? how Corbin guessed wrong before receiving any information? He just decided to skip the beat and be like, you know what? I'll get yeah, but my if he'd been writing, it would have looked like a goddamn genius. And if yeah, you hadn't no. called attention yeah, to it, no, we wouldn't have even no. like yeah, noticed. It's a no that's risk. True. No so risk like, shot right there. Those, yeah, those are non It doesn't even hurt. Chance. We don't even keep stats. So it's not even like shooting the ball. I was going to say it's like shooting the ball from three quarters court right before halftime. It's like, whatever. If you make yeah. it cool, yeah. not, no one cares. Well, that's fair. But they actually keep stats and that counts against you. In this case, we don't. So it truly is risk free. Every time back when I used to play in League of Legends, every time I would fire a skill shot, I would say, if I hit this, my IQ is 300. And then you only clip the good ones. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Perfect. That's me playing uh, Rocket Black, League. Black Common printed a million times. Uh, what what set is it originally in? I think I don't think he wants to divulge that. Onslaught. Oh. Onslaught. A zombie. Uh, it's smothered. a zombie. No. That's not very printed that much. When was when was Future Fires and Rap? Onslaught was a, um, a kindred set, right? So there were zombies? Onslaught looks like a spider that's also a bridge. I don't know how else to describe it. Uh, Shepherd of Rot is uncommon, I think. This is a sorcery. Dark Rit- because you're just going to name zombies if I don't That's true. <laughs> nip this Dark in the Ritual bud. Dark Ritual was not originally printed in Onslaught, Corbin. And it's also not a sorcery. It's also not in Onslaught. <laughs> it's also just not in Onslaught. <laughs> Very true. Yeah. The uh, last time they printed that card was Mercadian Masks. Uh, Onslaught Black Sorcery of the Million Printings. Man, I am going to feel like a big dumb It costs Three colorless and one black, DJ. Okay, Siphon Mind. So Siphon Mind we eventually is... eventually got uh, there with enough hints. Sweet card. Did yeah, not but it like, it's also run a lot in... Uh, so the only commander decks we have seen built for uh, whatever it is, Magic New Vegas, uh, Tiny Bones the Pickpocket is one of two commanders that people are, have been building around. It's very popular. Uh, and people are making people discard. So all that discard stuff, that was like not a thing between the old tiny bones and this one, like all that stuff gone back up. So like, this can't be a break in bulk, but I'll just give you this one for free. Geth's Grimoire has like two bucks right now. That's way too cheap. Card used to be 20. Yeah, it was a it's only thing, gotten the list but... printing. It hasn't gotten a meaningful yeah. reprint. So Geth's I wish Grimoire... I... Yeah, that could be I, that's pick of the week tier, honestly. I wish I knew. I wish there was data available on this, but it, it, I have a hunch that certain archetypes of cards that have commanders that get printed every few years, like discard and like some of these other strategies, I feel like discard ones get recycled into the market faster because of how toxic they are to the play group and how like. <laughs> yeah, like you get to play your tiny bones deck two or three times. Well, you get to play your yeah. turgrid deck a couple times, and then and everyone's like, like no, "I'm not playing against your yeah, turgrid." I mean, bro. Yeah. to that point, I built Bolus, um, Nickel Bolus, the Ravager. Like when it comes in play, everyone discards a card. 
as a commander and I built it when it came out as the oppression deck, right? Where you just played all of those discards effects. And over time, I got to the point, and obviously new cards coming out helped a lot in this, but I got to the point where I did cut most of the just sort of static discard effect ones. Like some of the really powerful or random discard ones I kept, but just having a discard deck doesn't work. I had to turn it into something else where it was more like play one or two discard spells and then start playing cards. So here's how Tiny Bones cards. is different. Tiny Bones plays spells out of their graveyard, so you could go all in on removal. You don't even have to make them discard. Yeah, that's a good that's a good place. Like little bit of discard, I think, is pretty nice in Commander. Yeah. The discard deck absolutely gets you targeted and you just don't want to. Like use, one Necrogen yeah. Mists, not three Necrogen Mists. Yeah, but also don't play Necrogen Mist because that's the worst. That's like you play it. It hits everyone, including yourself, and everyone hates you. And getting well, you rid of you gets rid of the Necrogen yourself? It, it was from a toxic deck originally, Nekusar. Teferi's Puzzle Box. That is a cyclical card that I can make money on every two years, and everybody should. <laughs> yeah. Sure. So I, I will. Con- yeah. Um. Go ahead. Sorry. I will continue on the black card theme of the week, Corbin. I hope you came prepared. Uh, mine is a <laughs> Lorwyn Black Uncommon, and I'll give you a creature. I'll say creature. Lorwyn Black Uncommon creature. Is it Ghastly Changeling? I'll is it? Is it a tree folk? No. The good black tree folk were in Shadowmoor. Creature. This is right when I started playing. Uh, so Morning Tide is technically then, the first one probably. I ever did. You said it's a black, uh, and it's a common. Uncommon. uncommon. An uncommon. Marsh uh, mad, mad, mad anti. Nope. I do love me a Marsh Flitter, but no, Corbin, it is also not Mad Anti. Oh, Mad Anti's a good guess, too. I think it might have been rare in Lorwyn, though. It's not a tree folk. It's probably a goblin. <laughs> it, well, or a fairy. I mean, but what were the uncommon fairies? There was Dream, the... Dream Spoiler Witch or something dumb. What was the know. one where th- anybody could discard a card to give it minus two, minus zero? Uh, Ona's Prowler is a rare. Okay. Ona's Prowler, that card is sweet. Is it the the one that has um, Defender? No. Jeez. I know what you're talking about, but no. Uh, you know what? I tap. Yeah, I don't know if we're going to I don't normally it, have to name this many cards. That's fair. Uh, Bogart ha- Harbinger. Bogart? Oh, ah, God damn Bogart, it. Bogart that Harbinger. That cycle was in Lorwyn. Oh. It was a tree folk. DJ's a liar. It is a oh, tree no, that's folk. A go- that's a goblin, though. That's not a- is that a changeling or a goblin? I didn't say it was a tree folk. Is it a- I-, I, I thought it was Burgard a Herbinger. I thought it was yeah. a changeling. It's Burgard Herbinger. Yeah, we did it. Uh, wow. I can't believe I whiffed on that. I was naming way more obscure. You know yeah, what? Yeah, you just got to name the Harbinger too good cycle. to be a breaking bulk, <laughs> honestly, because tree folk Harbinger was like eight bucks. Well, the it, elemental all one when uh, fairy, Team Romnath fa- came out yeah. was pretty big, too. So. That one's still worth some money. And fairy I, the, a goblin tutor? Did it get another printing? Merful Car- Marrow Harbinger is also worth money. Yeah. This just, it seemed like... Or the, the whatever, I don't know what it's called, but the I don't card, know, man. Merful I thought this, I, I didn't it. think this cycle was in Lauren. I thought it was in Morning Tide, but, you know, that's my yeah, yeah, yeah. idiot thinking. But... But yeah, this... Uh, also, this I would have immediately have... discounted this card if I'd thought of it. It's that obvious. So it doesn't have any other prints. It is literally just Lauren and the foil version. But there is a couple of things to consider here, and that is that goblins have a million cracked tutors nowadays that are much better than this. Like, you're playing Goblin Recruiter, you're playing Muxus, you're playing Goblin, uh, what is it, Ringleader, you're playing all these other... If you have black, there's there's zero... Like, this card is not obsolete. It may be, like, down on the depth chart, but, like, you're still gonna suit it up every night. Uh, foils are like thirty dollars for what it's worth. If you can find a clean sure. foil, they are very, very expensive for those pu- goblin purists out there. But uh, the regular goblin harbinger, bo- uh, Bogart, Bogart, whatever you want to call it, is uh, around a market it's, price of a dollar. It's, it's Bogart. Bogart. It's, it's it's not. It's Bogart. Humphrey Bogart Harbinger. <laughs> I think it's Harbinger. Also, I think it's um, Idolin because it is. Ugh. This is a stupid Ugh. conversation. Because it is. There's right, and then there's right, but feels I wrong. Don't, yeah, I don't. Right, yeah, there's right. Definitely feels wrong. It does. It's not. Yeah. Oh, we haven't brought up Artificer in a while. 
Ugh. Yeah. You know, I used to really, I don't want to say Did you know get OBS on. on is actually the pronunciate? Yeah, but I'm, I'm not going to say look, that. I, I didn't, I used to get on people sometimes about getting card names wrong. And it is tilting when people say Ravinica. But it was when we hit the Ravinica. word Idolin that I, I gave up. When I, when I, because I had that one wrong. And when I learned that it was Idolin and not Eidolon, I said that English is stupid. Language is actually dumb. I've been doing this wrong my entire life. I, I don't Dolan's care anymore. not even an English word. Fuck it. It sounds like a D's nuts joke waiting to happen. Right? <laughs> I dolin out these nuts! <laughs> yeah. Anyways, I'm gonna Anytime continue. I hear Dolan, I think Gooby, please. So Not the Knicks? Dolan? James Dolan? Uh all right. We're gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna come in hot here with um it is a blackish uncommon. It is what a What does that mo- mean? I, it's it's from it's it's a multicolored uncommon. Because Anthony from, Edwards. It's from Alara Reborn, because it, so it has to be multicolored because that set was very okay. silly. Alara and I was Reborn. looking at it this week because Ardent Plea is obviously now extremely expensive. Is Demonic Pl- Dreads uncommon? It is. That is not the answer. And uh, no, actually, I think that's a common. But uh, no, that's not the. What's answer. the blue black one? There's. Okay, go on. I'll just I'll just let you cook. Wasn't it a counterspell or something? There was a there was one color, one blue, one black. Cascade. That is Cascade, that is. I thought. Or did it have a different? You're thinking a Cathari Remnant, I believe. Oh yeah, that was that like a was four mana one one flyer or some shit. Yeah, but it had if it had Cascade, loved that card. Oh, and it could regenerate. That card was bust. Wow, what a card! One black. I played that in limited yeah. for sure. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Awesome. Uh, one mm. black. Mm-hmm. 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 Anathamancer? Nope. Ooh. Anathamancer. That's one of those cards that remember those are like twenty five bucks? They that's got like, really I... expensive at a time because they were like the Jund mirror breaker when Jund was the only deck in yeah. standard and extended. That was like my first year on the podcast I was making money on that card. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah. A lot of reborn uncommons. It's uh not a creature. There are too many cards in a lot. Was terminate rewards. uncommon in that set? No, it, that was it, it was common. I think it, it's not terminate. Just tell us the color combo. That'll give it away. That's not too much information. It'll give it away to DJ. It's black white. Oh, oh. yeah, that did give it away. That, Jason, Jason can continue to guess, but it did give. It did give <laughs> I, it I knew it would. DJ's played this card. What what sets this in again? Alara Reborn. Reborn. It's Alara one of my favorite commander decks, Jason. Yeah, this is, is a it DJ the uh, is it the token? Your tokens get plus one on their or your nope. creatures zealous get plus persecution. One on plus... Good guess. Zealous persecution. Good guess, Good guess but no. Uh, is it the um? I actually don't know. All right, it is Tainted DJ Sigil. Tainted Sigil. That's an artifact. True. It is you a son of a white non-creature. Not a creature. I don't know what you want, man. I, I didn't even consider the artifacts in that set. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Tainted Sigil is ever? sweet, man. Has it been reprinted? Let's see. I'm not convinced that it has. No reprint. No, never been reprinted. This card's 75 great. cent card, five dollar foil. Five dollar solid foil. solid buy list. Uh, yeah, you can sack. It's a three artifact, three cost artifact, black white colorless. So you can sacrifice it. You gain life equal to the total life lost by all players this turn. DJ used to play it in his silly little Selenia I still deck. Do. Still, still. I mean, I, yeah, sure. I haven't played against that Selenia deck in years, but I do have some traumatic memories of life totals just disappearing when he played it. Like this, that's one of those strategies where like a deck full of uncommons could get it done. Yeah, it's like a cool design. I'm not going to lie. Mage and uh, Tainted Sigils. Kind of. The the deck game. Were, it's like a pile of uncommons and also bulk mythics, like Axis of Mortality. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm not going to lie. DJ's deck design there was, was actually pretty cool. I appreciated that one. Yeah. Um, yeah it, I think this whole... card is also much better now because there are a lot more ways to pay lots of life to try to kill your opponent in one shot. So mm-hmm. Rowan Scion of War just looks at this card and feels really sad because anytime they're going to go to one to try to win the game, then you're just going to go to 95 or something. 
This is one of those cards that'll go up 25 cents over the next two years, or it'll be on game nights and become $18. So like, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I like this card a lot. We all picked cards with no reprints. Is that true? No, I picked no, a card Joe, with 10 with reprints. No, that's true. <laughs> that is extra not true in my case. Well, we did all pick black cards. I Hey, DJ told me that's what it was, and I... uh remembered one that i'd been looking at i had a few on tap there we go oh well, there you go corbin's Solid got a bunch bolt. in a holster like he lives in thunder junction or whatever this fucking stupid <laughs> thing is called or like, like i a spend a lot of cedar point this is <laughs> <laughs> what i actually do is spend a lot of time on mtgstocks.com not just because they sponsor this podcast but because it is by far the most useful tool on the internet for magic finance uh especially the premium side where you can set alerts and uh give yourself uh uh, s- sorry, set up portfolios of cards to track the progress. There's a lot of different tools you can do on the premium side. And even choosing the free side, it's what we use for all these breaking bulks. So you can see the price history of a card over time. You can look at the interest from the last day, the last week, uh, by market price, by medium price, anything you want to do with Magic Finance to keep up with the value of your collection, mtgstocks.com. Yeah, I, I, I used to write at MTG Stocks. It was great. All the tools are good, but I will say for the premium stuff, the tools are worth it. And there were a few I designed that are just like flag any time it's cheaper on Card Kingdom than it is on TCG Play. Some of those most of those cards are sold out and that's why it's flagging it. But a, a couple of times you'll find a card that's mispriced. So stuff like that, if you like, I just want to run this search once a day. I don't want to think about it. I want to search for a bunch of The tools that automate some of the things you want to look for are if if you're doing buying and selling at all, the premium side will pay for itself in like a couple of searches like uh, I wouldn't shill hard for MTG stocks uh, if I didn't believe in it. So so violent outburst is gone. Ardent plea is in shardless agent. The card that they intentionally printed into the format to enable cascade strategies remains. Uh, that's the state of modern after rhinos and to a lesser extent living in, but mostly rhinos just took over as dominant after it was freed from the clutches of scam. So now the question is what's next in modern with violent outbursts gone. Now violent outbursts probably should have been gone from the beginning Cascade decks have existed literally since the beginning of modern. Um, They've changed rules in the game because of Cascade. <laughs> because of people yes. blood elfing into uh, boom bust. Boom bust. Yeah, those are good times. That. I did love that. Uh, I think it was Tybalt's trickery that actually necess- necessitated that um, particular change. But I could be wrong because that might have just been a different broken instance. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, but so, cast they they. What's quite wild about it is that they went and printed crashing footfalls like they created rhinos as an archetype when it didn't exist i guess they thought it would be more fair to make four fours than living end but why would any of that it's so interesting corbin um, crashing footfalls was in the same set as hogak well fair enough (laughs) uh i guess at that point crashing footfalls wasn't really a problem was it it um, was, but really what it, happened it was is very not a problem compared to everything else in that set for sure. Yeah. Well, realistically well, what happened is so like that, the other thing here is that over the four years, exactly. They have printed a million cards that let rhinos become a shell yes. that you could fit everything else into and not an archetype in of itself, because yep. when it was an archetype in of itself, like living and still is slash was, you had to play a bunch of nonsense in order to do your powerful thing. You had to play, Amon Ket Commons and cards with seven mana that were vanilla. But <laughs> nowadays you get to play Subtlety, Solitude, Leyline Binding, Cyan of Draco, Leyline yeah, of Yeah, you Guild get to Pact, play real cards in the rest of the and deck. And the rest yep. of your deck technically, big emoji asterisk, costs three or less. And that's when you get to guarantee your your four mana or your zero mana four fours. Modern's a weird format. Yeah, I, that's it. I mean, DJ DJ nailed it. That's what happened to the format. <laughs> uh, so um, it, it's wild how many things can like very little is cast for what it costs in modern these days. There's uh, a reason. I, so um, yeah. a lot of the cards that I bought over the past weekend in Philly, uh, I looked through a lot of binders of players that have sort of come back to the game over a, a several year hiatus, COVID, whatever. Um, and a lot of them have, for some reason, play sets of Inquisition of Kozilek. This, this, that's happened like three times. 
where somebody sold me a binder that had four foil Inquisition of Kozilex in it. And I had this conversation of, yeah, the card doesn't hit anything. You, you can look at their Merktide region with your Inquisition, not take it, and then they will spend two mana to cast it and kill you with it. That Even though that card costs seven, kind of, but... So the, the mana value system is just all over the place in terms of what you actually have to pay for something. And it's interesting because Modern started, obviously it's it's pretty old now, and not to like boomerize ourselves here, but it started as a format where people, the, the sort of the mantra was supposed to be turn four wins where the earliest things could realistically happen. And that was where things started. Over the years, of course, as new cards got printed, power creep, blah, 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 everything started trending downward in mana cost. To the point that when Tasha's Hideous Laughter was printed in whatever Horizon set or whatever set it was printed it was into. It AFR. The yeah. D&D set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and it exiled cards from their library until they hit a mana cost of 20 total. That just, I watched that just mill 30 or 40 cards against like Death Shadow players, you know? Like, it's nutty. Uh, and these days, it's the complete opposite. That card has basically been completely cut out of mill decks because all it takes is hitting like one Merc Tide and now... All of a sudden, you're only milling like seven cards with your three mana spell. Um, yeah, it, it's just very interesting how much of a change modern has gone through. Um, where at the same time, Chalice of the Void was better than it had ever been because things either cost zero or a billion, but not a billion. So, yeah, it, an interesting way that it's developed. And people are looking at Yogmoth to take over next because after the original scan ban, that Yogmoth was pretty much the best deck, uh, but things sort of just trended uh towards towards rhinos getting there and now it's kind of resetting so i don't know because mon like i covered some of the regional championships for wizards over the weekend and they had some pretty diverse looking top eights to be completely honest um and this was before the the violent outburst ban so i don't know i don't know if things are going to be wide open in the format or if there is going to be a like a, a trend just towards Yogmoth because that's what everyone thought was the strongest and that deck is pretty silly these days. Um, but we're going to find out really fast because the format cools off and then June, end of June, beginning of July, which is not that far away, under four months, we have Modern Pro Tour and we'll see where Modern goes from there. And you can use your ponders in it. Mm. Your hot dog if ponders. If only. No way they'll give you. They chose Ponder or Preordain, and they obviously gave people Preordain because it doesn't have the word shuffle on it. Ponder's not getting unbanned in Modern. There's enough shuffling in that format already. Every day I'm shuffling. <laughs> Every like, Imagine playing Amulet. Just just try playing Amulet for like nine rounds. Try playing have, EDH. Oh, have carpal do I shuffle nine times in a turn playing all of my landfall decks? I you sure do. do, brother. Yeah, you do. <laughs> I have Night of the Reliquary and uh, Retreat to Coral Helm, and I don't win that turn. Like, it's oh a bad God, modern day. Jason. <laughs> judge, Judge, Jason only shuffled once after his Green Sun Zenith in EDH. Oh, got him. I was going to say, at least if you're doing the combo thing with Knight or whatever, you can uh, just, like, pick up your deck, you know? But I play, like, Archelos, and it's just a bunch of Farseek effects, because with Archelos out, they're all really silly. They all come into and, play on tap, I understand. And your Myriad Landscape does, too. Like, what if Amulet just... of Vigor were a commander that had green in his identity? Oh. oh. It, it went predictably, because it's in the card draw removal colors. I, I, I'm not going to lie. I love that deck. It's a, For me, it's a lands deck. Uh, and I have like Urza Saga that goes and gets Amulet. Of Urza Vigor. Saga gets Amulet. Yeah. Yeah. It's very, and, and, oh, Expedition believe me, I have enough landfall decks to know that Urza Saga gets <laughs> Zoran Orb and Amulet of Vigor. Well, like, not everyone puts, cause like, it's like a 30 or $40 card and people just automatically associate it with modern or legacy or whatever. And sometimes you just like forget that the one ring is good in an EDH, you know, like yeah. maybe the one ring in particular, but you know what I mean? Like, just like powerful cards and other formats are you just sometimes don't even think about them for commander because they cost thirty dollars. I thought this banned vintage card. that is commander legal. Because <laughs> <laughs> it just like it doesn't matter. Yeah. I, I I don't know. I like that. So um but it's like, yeah, it's like when the moment you realize I can actually just put Snapcaster in my commander deck. Which is maybe doesn't mean much to kids these days, but to a boomer. No, that kids these something. days are buying the Fallout pre-cons and playing with those and buying the $400 boxes of collector boosters. Probably not. 
Would it surprise you guys if I told you the number one most played card in all of Fallout is Nuka Cola Vending Machine? That would surprise me. It is number one with a bullet above number two, Radstorm and number three, Feral Ghoul. All very, very, very good cards. I think um, Radstag might be the most watchful Radstag might be the most Mm -hmm. underplayed in EDH right now. I think watchful Radstag. What does that card do, Jason? Would be nuts in other formats. Uh, It has a it's a two two with evolve. And whenever it evolves, create a token that's a copy of it. Oh, yeah, that's kind of funny. There's got to be combos there, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. So, um, red really underrepresented in uh, the the top cards in the set. Uh, Kaisar is uh, number six. But after Kaisar, the next most played card is like number 38. That's Grim Reaper Sprint. And Grim Reaper Sprint's a card everyone's like, it's selling out at five. But like, it's back in stock at five everywhere. But mm, that card's pretty nutty. Um, the bobbleheads are obviously cool because anybody that's going to play with one bobblehead is going right. to play with all of them. Remember, Bone Sabers is a card that gets played a lot, and Power Fist is a straight up better Bone Sabers. Green, black, blue deck um, is the is the most like popular, best selling one. Is that um, the one with all the proliferate stuff in it? Yeah, and it also has my pick of the week in it. So that's Ooh. the one with the the master, and uh, mm-hmm. oh, moth wild mothman. I didn't play Fallout seventy six, so I don't know who that is, or what that is. I don't know how it's pronounced. Is it? I'm the oh, maybe mothman, it's Moth- or is maybe it, it's I'm Mothman? Mothman. We are it's the Mothman. Mothmans. We're Mothman. from Holland or something. I don't know. I thought you love Fallout, but you didn't play all of them. I, d- I haven't played 76. I spent so much time this year playing Fallout 4. I did like 10 playthroughs of it. Oh, geez. Okay. Including well, a guy who only used the baseball bat, which was. Well, a you got fun. something to look forward to now. Oh, yeah. I mean, Fallout's my. So obviously, this is the opposite of Doctor Who for me in terms of like. Jason so I, sells his I bought, collection. I bought Wizards two sets releases, of decks Fallout. to bust for singles and one set of decks to sleeve up and have just as a four pack to play when anybody comes over. So yeah. that's a good idea. That's I, I encountered my first uh, rad counter over the weekend. Someone had one of the pre cons and they brought it to just our normal commander night. Uh, it was sweet. A rad counters as a concept. Rad counters are, awesome. are lit. Yeah. The enchantment. They kept putting an enchantment on one of my creatures that when I attacked my opponents, they got. Like my creature was goaded, and when it attacked opponents, they got rad counters. Yeah, that was awesome. That was like the best goad card, the coolest goad card, or whatever it was I've ever seen. I mean, it took them until Fallout to print a creature that let me pay treasure tokens for their creatures. I can buy their <laughs> cards, and I'm so <laughs> excited. And again, Rakdos actually plays like I want Simic to play. I think I'm Rakdos. Kellogg made me realize I'm Rakdos. So it's been thanks Kellogg 15 and years, Jason wife shooter. What's that? Been like 15 years that you've been a Simic person and this is it. Jason goes Rakdos. <laughs> no, I March looked at the 12th, decks I brought to Chicago. I'm like, I brought five red black decks and like only Omnath in red, in blue green. So I took slow yeah. Gurk apart. Maybe what I really want to be doing is bullshit and Rakdos <laughs> does more bullshit. Blim well, Comedic uh, Genius is the funniest deck ever made. Yeah, I think all of the Rakdos, like I was talking about my Bolas deck earlier, all the Rakdos cards are generally pretty fun. It's fun to take your opponent's stuff. It's fun to cast random things yeah. off the top of their library without paying mana costs. Like Hurl into Hell is a fun one where you like exile their creature. And Hurl into Hell rules, it. yeah. Yeah, like those, those kind of Rakdos like, cards. Oh, Simic cool. Manipulator steals their creatures. Simic is the creature stealing colors, but nah, man. Insurrections in red. It was there all along. <laughs> so the, the the Fallout stuff is, you know, it's going to be good. Um, Mr. House is the number one most built deck so far. And Kaisar is number three. So that uh, red, black, white precon is also probably a pretty decent pickup. Um, why is Mothman's number two? And uh, Red Storm is just... Red Storm's good outside of the precons in a way that like a lot of the other cards aren't necessarily, uh, mm-hmm. you know, vats is good in general. Also idolized is good in general, but some of these kind of need fallout type mechanics. 
but not a lot of them. And my pick of the week is a car that's just, it just seems like it is a very good EDH card overall, and it's under $3 right now. So I'm teasing that I'm going to do a Fallout deck <laughs> pick of the week later. All in all, this set plays very fun. The decks are good, and the the collector boosters are so expensive, no one's going to buy them. Well, that was my question. Until they, for, like, for, dump yeah. them, and then people buy them. But, like, the old scarcity prices will still be the prices for a while. Yeah. So, like, I what think do you guys some think of this stuff could end there? up being pretty valuable in the near term and maybe even the medium term. I, I had, um, I opened a foil of uh, Ravages of War and a foil wasteland, or at least a full art wasteland out of it. Ooh. Um, the foil fallout, the, the Vault Boy wasteland? Yeah. Ooh. I don't remember if mine's foil or not, but either way, I opened two of the top three cards in the set and one, the one collector booster I got at MagicCon, and people started making me offers that were like $40, $50 for both of them that weekend. And I was like, that seems so low. And now that the set's actually out, it turns out it was low because those cards, or at least for now, are worth more. So uh, that brings me to my question about the collector booster boxes being so expensive. I, I don't. I mean, I remember buying Doctor Who collector booster boxes for like two fifty. I mean, is this signi- Is this a scarcity thing? Is it about the cards in them? Like, why is it is Fallout just this big of a hit? What do you guys think is going I, on? I think they might have underprinted. Because they had they had forever to do the Doctor Who one because that didn't line up with anything. But this had to line up with the release of the show. So maybe there were production issues or something. But like I heard everybody that was ordering this got really heavily allocated. Yeah. And they're used to being allocated. So, um, yeah, this I, I think it might just be scarcity. And if they like either are hoarding them or they just haven't printed enough and they print more later. That second wave of product won't really do much for prices because people aren't going to um, really pay attention. So it's very, what do you think? it's very hard to do secondary releases of this kind of thing when yeah. it comes to the uh, the transparency required to state the odds of serialized cards. Like mm. for gambling reasons, like if, yeah, if, if Wizard point. says, hey, you have an X percent chance to open a serialized card in these packs, then that has to be guaranteed and they can print, they have to print an exact amount of product to right. maintain that rate. And then they can't just make more later and either A, not include serialized cards, which also, again, breaks the paradigm of advertising, or B, like they had shorted the amount of serialized cards in the first one and they're more in the left second. Like, well, so you if there's not more that's why they had and they to... allocated dealers this much, I think this stuff probably is a pretty safe investment sealed. Especially the collector boosters, I, I, I wouldn't pay their current price, but they're like they're going to go down as people like eventually forget about this. So, like, well, I mean, there's already the value two sets like there with preview I mean, cards after this. Ravages of War is an expensive card because it's scarce. I mean, is and that's the most well, expensive it's, card. It's in the expensive collector card because it was scarce. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's the most expensive card in the collector boost. Right? I am not a big fan of any Magic the Gathering sealed product in yeah, the long term. That's what uh, I think too. With the the product shift of just making so much product over the course of the next few years. Like but people the, are going to be want Marvel. They're going to want their other thing. They're going to FOMO for it. I, I guess, but like if it, it's, it is, go ahead. It, it seems like a really low supply product. I agree. Yeah. It, it is possible that, you know, look, we're on year one and a half or two or whatever of these really wide release universes beyond. I mean, three years from now, when they come back around for Lord of the Rings two or whatever, or, whatever, name your new IP and they come into it, you're still going to have Fallout fans who may want to go back and have that Fallout sealed deck experience in a pod of four with the other three Fallout decks, right? I think that's the argument for the sealed product. I'm with DJ in that I think the overprinting just, you know, overpowers it. But um, but th- then, like, yeah, I mean, that are people going to want the collector boosters in that case or do they want the actual game experience, right? Yeah, I, th- I think the pre-cons are are a terrible place to park money for sure. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll buy a couple of boxes of collector boosters and put my money where my mouth is, but like, you like that over the sealed. I, I don't like really like either. Decks, but yeah. Yeah. Asking a player to front that much money later on is, I think is a big ask. Like sealed part just has this, this pseudo artificial cap of that. It doesn't go over like, 
Well, it's also yeah. There's well, there's so much too. It's like nobody likes just Fallout, like right? Like that's nobody's like only IP they like. So they'll eventually print something shiny and new. But like, I, I'm not. I'm certainly not. I don't have any collector boosters of this set. Yes, if it eventually becomes like dirt, I'm in. But like at its current price, with as high as it is, I, I don't know. Um, well, and that's a the it's, singles yeah. are plenty affordable right now if you know what you want. That's a good sure. point too, because I just was thinking about it in terms of people want that board game like experience of having all four pre cons. Well, people do like board games, but they don't necessarily love three hundred dollar board games if each deck is seventy five dollars. Yeah, you know. So uh, for three hundred dollars, you can buy like every other Fallout game. Yeah, I yeah, <laughs> that's a good point. I mean, like that's the magic. Like you make that argument about all magic cards ever, but yes. You know, yeah, I like I can go stream people, Doctor I, Who I for seven dollars a month. Cost on sealed product, so like that's a consideration. I don't pay retail. If I did pay retail, my advice might be different. All right, before we get into pick of the week, uh, Jason, do you want to talk? I know we're we're grilling you for Commander info today, but hey, that's what we do, especially when it's relevant. That's what I um, do. How is Murders of Karlov Manor holding up? What have you seen? People flock to like actually enjoy. We always talk about coming up on the sets, not just what people are hyped about beforehand, but what people are actually playing a month sure. or two later. What are you, what are you seeing people liking with, with murders? So you might be surprised. Everybody thought Ansrag the Quake Mole was number one with a bullet, but like we talked about a little bit earlier with Tiny Bones, some of that toxic stuff doesn't get re- uh, repeated necessarily. Whereas Voja, Jaws of the Conclave, and Judith Carnage Connoisseur are decks that are fun to play, but aren't necessarily toxic enough that your playgroup's like, don't play that deck again. So mm-hmm. Voja and Judith are number one and number two in the set, pushing Anzrag to number three. Massacre Girl's number four, and Pride of the Hulk Clay's number five, which pushes Niv Mizzet out of the top five, which if you'd looked at the stuff before the, you know, all the data came in, you might have ranked those differently. So that was a surprise to me, certainly. Um, yeah. Mirko from the Commander decks is number one with a bullet. Um, actually, you know what? Morska. Jesus, Mirko and Morska. The Obsessive Theorist, the, the Vampire Detective is number one, and the Veldokin Fish Detective is number two. Jesus. Uh... <laughs> Art well, Druid's uh, Charm is is showing really strong play in EDH. That's a that is a multi format card. Yeah, that card, which nutty. is why it is you know like twelve bucks on Card Kingdom and like almost ten on TCG Player. War Leaders calls in the top five in EDH also, which you know I I was surprised that uh, War Leaders call finished over all but two of the Surveil lands, but the Surveil lands they're worth money now. The 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 black blue one's up to ten bucks right now. It's, like it's it, very good and modern and yeah, and exactly. The yeah. surveilling, yeah, quite good in in some of these color combinations. So, you know, like nobody cares as much about lush portico because you're not trying to yeah. surveil in green white. But exactly. you know, in the the black based ones and the blue based ones are n- no surprise. Uh, I, I think that they should probably go into a lot of commander decks though, because I mean, you I, oh like, yeah, you write about lush portico or whatever, but I don't know. I play tap lands and and decks all the time. And the fact that you can fetch them out, if you're a person who plays a fetch land mana base, they're extremely attractive. A fetchable, being fetchable makes it a lot more appealing than it basically made the temples. Right. That's the difference. Yeah, absolutely. The blue ones, at least. Uh, You guys will be surprised to know the number one most played card is the common demand answers. Draw two cards, and you have to sack an artifact or discard a card when you play yeah, it. So it's the, uh, the 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 wild guess effect, whatever. Yeah. Voice effect so like is, that's uh, a little bit boring. Is that in a precon or something? Arc Druid's Charm being number two is charming to me. I love Arc Druid's Charm. But uh, Crime Novelist is way up there. Escape Tunnel for being mm. a common yeah. land. It's yep. it's the next most played card after Lush Portico, which is the last surveil land. So like. Escape Tunnel, no surprise. Uh, Escape Tunnel is a pretty nutty card. Slide Escape Tunnel Humanity, is a future, obviously a big bolt. one. That's a you know a, a four dollar common. Are they going to give us some sort of additional copies thing? Or are they just going to let this be like a five dollar common in an imprint set? I really don't know. 
Uh, but well, yeah, Vein the- Ripper is further down on the page in EDH than it is in other formats, obviously, you know. Uh, and I think Leyline of the Guild Pack drops a buck or two every week. So I think some of the hype about that was well, a little bit the, misplaced. That card is real, actually, in modern. And I think that, especially if you're the Leyline Rhinos deck isn't playing Violent Outburst anymore, they're just, I mean, they're going to go to the Guild Pack versions. So Scion, have- and I think that's a that's just a real thing in modern now. Out of all the cards we've talked about so far, I am very surprised to hear nobody talk about what is, in my mind, the craziest price trend of this set. Uh, Slime Against Humanity is more expensive now than Rat Colony has ever been. No, there's no way Rat Colony never got above 350 on TCG I, Player. I, I think it's close. I, But, like, you, you, can, you can buy... Slime against humanity for four dollars a pop on CK. Like that's that's crazy. That for a card that just released last month. I I think there's but there's like oh I'm not getting burnt. Fool me five times, shame on me. Sort of with these you know printings of the card that you can have any number and people like oh yeah I bulked out all of those persistent petitioners. Like I, I really think people are like nope. I know how these cards go. I'm not selling these. So I think Slime Against Humanity is not hitting the open market because people aren't like dumping them. I think it's uh, I think it's a card that everybody knows is eventually and it, it might be the, the best out of that bunch. I don't even know. I think it's quite good. I think it has a lot more resiliency than than the rest of them and more synergy with things like populate and the yeah. ability to, to yeah. doubling season your stuff. Uh, you're you're much less open to getting end the festivities if you're playing a bunch of rat colonies that have one or two toughness but like slime against humanity is just it's four dollars it's four dollars and the thing about this card is it it is one of the ones that you have to buy you don't have to but you are going to want to find a place that sells 30 at once and when you are that store that has all 30 you get to charge that premium you can list these at five or six or and be like you know what yeah, I'll, I'll wait. I'll wait until I'm the one person who has all of these in stock for you. And the that's not a big price difference between somebody who's willing to shell out two fifty, two hundred fifty dollars for their stack of slime against humanities. That same person will pay two eighty or three hundred. That is not a big difference. Yeah, percentage wise. And yeah, yeah. Like uh, I, also, I really like this card, even in the long term, considering what it's at now. Like I would not be surprised to see Slime Against Humanity hit five or six dollars a piece, and those mm. price insensitive customers are still just filling the cart on TCG Direct or CK or what have I you. I did that with Nazgul. They were so rare. I'm like, f- yep. they're mismatched, half are foil, half art, and none of them are the same art. Just give me all. I need the number of Nazguls that I can run in the deck. <laughs> so I, I think some people are just like, cool, whatever. You're the only person who has twenty. Yeah, and the slime against humanity in particular, though, I think is it's worth noting. Like, it's kind of design designed to be a commander uh, specific like archetype of that card, right? Right. Whereas because you're building Col- them, you're you're doing right. all these Rat colony, and it's kind of just like a normal. I don't want to say normal, like it, but it wasn't designed to play well against four people in a fun way with a bunch of other cards. It's just a cool little rat design, right? That's in the vein of relentless rats. So I think that like, if we had been in a place with, with magic design and where the market is and as well, and had modern commander design principles applied to rat colony, it might've been four or $5 still. Well, we had modern design principles applied to dragon's approach. And that one is also like three fifty or $4. Yeah. Yeah. Fair. Yeah, Absolutely. People like dragons. People like slimes. And people they also like slimes. Like... Is that a thing we've seen historically? They like slimes. So you Jason, me? Jason, if I had an acronym for slime right now, I, I would I would rip that one off and make Corbin Google it. But I don't. Hmm. We're all trying to. Sometimes think of ladies involve my enemies. Sure. Not, and no. you say improv is dead. <laughs> I, no, I said it's not funny. It's alive and I wish it wasn't. <laughs> uh, well, I'll tell you what else people actually do enjoy, though, and that is going to Coalesce Apparel and Design using the gift code Brainstorm Brewery 
and getting 10% off their entire order, whether that order is for our merch or for anyone else's. So definitely go check out Coalesce Apparel and Design. Uh, that is the best place you can get your merch to support your They send creators. soft, comfortable hoodies, really nice quality cotton t-shirts, and they send you a booster pack when you place an order there. I have a lot of Coalesce apparel, and <laughs> I don't have to. Or buy it's, some stickers. stickers look, you can cool. get your magic merch from random uh, company in the world, or you can get your magic merch from a magic Century company run by good people uh, over at Coalesce Apparel and Design. So definitely check that out. And they're just trying to do out. good funny stupid memes like that okiba playmat that i have love that and of course you can pay for that with the money you'll make from the picks of the week that we are about to bring you pick of the week pick of the week pick of the week time for the pick of the week we bring into you every week the cards that we like either as a cheap piece to pick up now or as something that's going to be going up in price in the near term term, or sometimes in the long term if we uh, call out one with that. So I'm going to start off here. This card has been climbing. It's a uh, black rare from Universes Beyond. Uh, it's the talk of everything these days. Uh, but this one's from Warhammer. We've seen a bunch of Warhammer cards spike over the last few months. Uh, this is one of the latest to start to move. But Poxwalkers. The 3-1 three, for 3, Death Touch. Whenever you cast a spell from anywhere other than your hand, return Poxwalkers from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. Just a very simple little card, but it was $1.50. Now it's two fifty, and it looks like it's heading up to $5. So it's just, war. we talked about these, the, the Universe Beyond decks being popular. The Warhammer ones very much are, and the cards continue to all move up in price. Yeah, they, it seemed like they just made like 75 good edh cards in that set but there was just so much <laughs> yeah. came out at once that nobody really could sort through it i feel like and they've all just been similar. ticking up yeah they've been ticking up one at mm -hmm. a time for the last six months i've been writing about them for tcg player every week it's just like a uh, warhammer watch you know he's a new warhammer card spiking sure all right i will continue the black theme from breaking bulk over to pick of the week that corbin brought us with mm -hmm. and that's uh, what i'm here for crypt Gast was in Ravnica Remastered. It got all uh -huh. the fancy-ish nonsense. It's got old border. It's got blah, blah, blah. It's got all these crazy treatments now. Uh, but it's cheap. It is affordable. Crypt Gas is down to around five bucks. And I don't think it'll be that way. And again, all hmm. these always come with asterisks of if you manage to dodge the reprint. But I, I think buying at the bottom of this particular reprint is perfectly fine if you are and looking to get the stuff they're not ever going to reprint. They'll never reprint the the old border, for example. Right? So it's why Crypt Gas was printed in Gate Crash. It was printed in Commander 2014, mm -hmm. which came out at a minimum 10 years ago, maybe 11 years ago. And remember how their year conventions worked then. Uh, its next reprinting was Ravnica Remastered. So yeah, this is not it's a like card that they have just decade. jammed. Yeah, that's not a card that they've just jammed into everything. It might literally be more than a decade, depending on their their year conventions with those decks. I don't Extort know. is potentially a weird mechanic to avoid putting in precon sometimes. I, I extort is just they need to print more creatures with extort and more permanents with extort. Like it's <laughs> such a good mechanic. Extort is not a good mechanic objectively, Jason, because it drains for three. Correct. And gain, it's not. It's too good. It. They, okay. Every time they reap, every time they could have used extort, they instead say you gain one life, and each opponent loses a life. Like they didn't like extort. That said, it's twenty twenty four. Maybe the power creep makes extort the right place to be. I yeah, love it's it. Not like, I it's not like it's good, but it's not a problem. Like how many people out there playing blind obedience? People hate blind obedience, Jason. Oh, why? Because they can't go off with their stupid. Uh, combo token bolt like <laughs> yeah blind obedience shuts down all your uh splinter twin bolts so it does i love it. it's a great card uh as a bonus pick of the week i will throw in mm -hmm. i think it is if you are the target audience for slime against humanity and you are spending all this money or grinding out your breaking bulks to acquire these these slimes and these ooze tokens uh, I don't think it's the worst idea to pick up your serialized version of Imori the Collector. Mm -hmm. There are this is a one out of five hundred card. There are only that many out there for the serialized one. 
And uh, there have been three sales of this particular version, the Multiverse Legends one, on TCG in the past month. So Interesting. It, it has moved, picked up a little bit of velocity. Of course, it's a small sample size, so that could just be chance, but... Uh, no, yeah, it makes sense. Some number of them are moving, and it is a very affordable serialized card at around $100 on average. So, I mean, if you have that Slime Against Humanity budget and you want to get a really nice card for your deck that has a reasonable velocity and also a reasonable out trajectory, like, once you sell that deck, it's, it's I think, easier to sell that particular serialized card when it comes in a whole package with a bunch of other things that people would want to go with it. So True, true. All right, Jason, you've been teasing this pick of the week all episode. What is it? Uh, It's a black card. (laughs) It's not just black, though. It's also green, which some would say makes it gold because black and green is gold. Atomize from Fallout does two things that you want to do in Commander. You want to destroy a non-land permanent. At Uh. instant speed for only four mana, and you want to proliferate. This card does both of those things. Now, traditionally, proliferate was relegated to blue for the most part, and a little bit in some other colors. But Atomize says, hey, you got Mm. rad counters, you got plus one, plus one. There's all kind of stuff going on in the game of Commander. I'm going to blow up a non-land permanent like a Crypt Ghast, which isn't too good. It's just good. I will atomize your Crypt gas, and then you will get more rad counters, and I will get more plus one, plus ones, and everybody's happy. This atomize is, the... is under $3 right now. Mm-hmm. Does not seem correct long term. I, I think you're entirely right. This is the one card, not necessarily the one card, the first card that when I looked through all the Fallout stuff, I circled this one. It's a, this has to go on my Excel deck. Abzan uh, Toxic deck where you try to get everyone to three and then start playing their cards. This is so good for that. Yeah, it's the number 10th most played card in the set. Um, some stuff like Vats and Nuclear Fallout is already creeping up to the 4 or $5 level, but I think Atomize is too cheap. Yeah, no, I agree. This is, I mean, this feels exactly, we're talking about Pox Walkers, which is just some dorky little 40k card that's climbing like, like wild. Atomize seems like the card from Fallout that does that six months from now, you know, or if not sooner. But also, if like... If under $3 seems affordable, the glowing one is in as many decks as Atomize, and it is under a dollar. So the glowing <laughs> one could be a pretty decent card. It's, uh, you know... If you like it. Whenever... Well, when people mill cards, you gain life. That that could be useful, especially if you're milling them. Yeah. Yeah. So the glowing one is less useful outside of Commander than Atomize is. So that shows you the price difference. But I still think Atomize is too cheap. Especially with Nuka Coley vending machine going for like fifteen bucks and Radstorm going for five. If you buy Atomize at under three dollars and it goes to five, congrats, you doubled up. Mm-hmm. So seems like the best uh positioned card to make you some money. I love that one. All right. Well, everybody, we hope you enjoyed this episode of Brainstorm Brewery. As always, we appreciate our sponsors. We also appreciate those of you at home who go to patreon.com slash BSB and support us directly. Uh, we know it's tough out there for everybody. That certainly goes for the magic community. Um, I recently um, found out that uh, Card Market, one of the, the largest websites and uh, marketplaces in Europe, is moving away from written content entirely because it just, um, in their words, doesn't work anymore. So we know that it's difficult out there for content creators everywhere. And we appreciate all of you who find it in your hearts and wallets to support us at patreon.com slash BSB. We use it to make this cast great, uh, as well as for all of our support staff that is able to, to, to make this really work. Because, um, you know, as you might notice from our rotating cast, uh, we're we're jetting around the country a lot for work and everyone's staying very busy. And we um, really are glad that we're able to make this podcast with a staff that we're able to pay Thanks to all of you who support us at patreon.com slash BSB, where you get some pretty nice benefits as well. And if you care, you get enough finance info to like make your Patreon money back. Mm. Yes, we would like to think you do one big trade a year and you paid for a year of Patreon. As Jason says, it's uh, as little as 20 or 25 cents a week. 50 cents a week if you want to get that special flair in the Discord. Get that flair that lets you know you're not poor. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you everybody so much for listening to this episode of Brainstorm Brewery. We'll see you next week.